Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 11th of February. Hope you all had a great trading week and are looking forward to the upcoming week. And uh, before we get into um, the fundamentals and technicals, uh, please do like, subscribe and share the video uh, if you in, uh, enjoy the content and you find the content uh, useful for your trading and um, yeah, let's get into it. So uh, week ahead, 11th of February in the US, investors will closely watch inflation report, uh, followed by retail sales figures, producer inflation data and the Michigan Consumer Confidence Index. Additionally, speeches by several Federal Reserve officials will be monitored. So um, again, all eyes on the US dollar. Really, the theme is when uh, are or when is the uh, Federal Reserve going to cut rates, right? And that is really where um, <clears throat> what is driving um, uh, prices over the medium to long term. So um, the longer they hold uh, or seem to hold, uh, which would basically mean that if inflation remains sticky um, and not coming down to their 2% target, um, and the longer they hold, the more the dollar will end up being a buyer. So this week is going to be um, quite an important week in terms of uh, the, the, where the market prices in or how the market prices in uh, the next uh, rate cut, whether it's going to be sooner or later. So internationally, highlights include the UK's fourth quarter or Q4 GDP inflation and unemployment data, as well as Q4 flash GDP growth rates for Japan. So the UK have got a lot of data coming out as well. And also as well, um, Japan, uh, that's going to be um, interesting uh, as it may, if, if GDP growth kind of holds up, which I think is expected to, then the Bank of Japan uh, are likely or potentially likely to um, hike rates a bit sooner. Uh, of course, we'll get into... Um, uh, the Japanese data a bit later in the video and inflation rates for the UK and Switzerland will be followed uh, along with unemployment rates for Australia. Finally, Germany's ZEW economic sentiment and Australia's NAB business confidence are set to be released. So lots of data coming out, especially for uh, the dollar, the uh, pound, as well as uh, Japan. So yeah, that's it for um, for the upcoming week. So uh, before we do get into the analysis, just wanted to go over uh, trade analysis and trade that I'd taken a couple of weeks ago, uh, and it was on the Euro Swiss and the Euro Swiss. Um, this was the, uh, the chart, and this was basically the, uh, the the setup. And so, if we go into the Discord group. Um, <clears throat> on the 30th of the first Tuesday, the 30th of January, um, I basically said to everyone in the group, I said, due to uh, the Eurozone dodging a recession, there is an opportunity to buy the Euro. My pick is the Euro Swiss. And they said, uh, this uh, just come after the, um, the Europe in the Eurozone had dodged a recession. So I expected actually uh, some upside and um, the Swiss franc is basically on uh, our sell list and it's been like that for uh, the past uh, few weeks. And so there was really a kind of a divergence in terms of, you know, trying to uh, buy the euro. And the euro I'm actually not, not bullish on overall, but I think uh, there was, um, uh, if I'm going to buy the euro, uh, it was going to be against a weaker, what I thought would be a weaker currency uh, and it was going to be against the Swiss franc. So um, this was really the setup. And uh, just going back to the Discord group, this was really the uh, the setup right here. And so if you open that in the browser, uh, this is what I had seen at the time. So we'd come down into this daily demand zone right here. And so, yep, it was pretty much a, uh, a, a buy, right, <clears throat> in my book. So... Um, this is where I had entered. So I would entered into three positions or um, I was hoping to get into three positions, which I ended up getting into three positions. So the first um, entry was a market order at the 0 0.9351, right? So that white line that extends there, that was the first uh, entry. The second entry was a 50% 
pullback uh, pending order buy at 0 0.9333 and then the third if prices had pulled back would have been at the 0 0.9316 and so uh, many of the guys all of the guys in the uh, discord group know exactly how you know how to enter and how we've been entering uh, for years and years this is basically the method that i use and um if it comes back then brilliant if it doesn't then um in terms of you know pulling back and triggering me into these positions then um then brilliant right but if it doesn't then at least i'm in a market order there but on this trade what i had done um you know just basically what price had done is it had come down triggered me into all three positions my stop loss was at the 0.9297s, I think it was on 98s around there. And so um, <clears throat> I'd been triggered into all three positions. Now, at this point, it does get a bit, you know, a bit scary because you could lose three positions. But com being confident, of course, and doing my uh, back testing and stuff, I know um, that this uh, works. And I've been trading like this for years. And so um, there is obviously a chance that I could lose all three. That's fine. But, um, you know, pretty much if I'm right about this trade, then um, the risk reward uh, is, is typically uh, really good. But on this trade, what I did was because um, <clears throat> I wasn't necessarily, you know, overly confident on the euro. And although I did think that it was going to go higher, what I decided to do was take profit along the way. So um, as we got triggered into all three positions, what I did on this and on the uh, the, the uh, pending order that was at the bottom right here, uh, about ninety five percent retracement, I took profit off there at a one to one, yeah. And then um, what I also did when prices started going higher, took took a one to one off here. So now I am um, in a profitable position, right? Thinking that I can hold this and swing trade this. But as uh, data started coming out for the Euro, I wasn't too confident that prices would go too much higher. Of course, there was always a possibility that prices could go all the way up to, you know, reach these highs. But um, uh, I just thought what I'd do is, I was in some other Swiss franc trades as well. Uh, many of you know I was in the Aussie Swiss as well as the dollar Swiss. And so I, what I thought I'd do is I'll just take profit off at um, on the final position at about a 1.1 to 1, which is around here on the final position, rather than trying to swing trade it maybe up here. I was planning on swing trading the other uh, Swiss positions. And so on the uh, Wednesday, the 7th of February, uh, I managed to uh, completely get out of all positions. So three wins um, <clears throat> on the Euro Swiss franc. So uh, that ended up being a, um, a really good uh, trade and a really good example of, um, you know, just higher time frame trading and really how to manage the trades and uh, and the fundamentals playing out in um, in our favor, right? So that was, the, uh, the trade breakdown. Anyways, let's get into uh, the uh, week's analysis and looking at the dollar uh, index. And this is the dollar index. This is an equally weighted dollar index. And um, if you want the calculations for the uh, weekly dollar index, I do have a video on my YouTube channel. I'll, I'll put the link up in the uh, top right hand side as well as the description uh, box in if you're watching this on YouTube. So last week, <clears throat> uh, I was saying that I'm pretty much uh, bullish and waiting for you know prices to kind of go to the upside. Uh, the dollar um, fundamentally this week, pal, uh, tells 60 minutes. Fed is wary of cutting rates too soon. So uh, pal reiterates that a March interest rate cut is unlikely, and 2024 rate forecasts probably haven't changed dramatically. So it says here, the Federal Reserve uh, Chair Jerome Powell said Americans uh, may have to wait beyond March for the central bank to cut rates as officials look for more economic data to confirm that inflation is headed down to 2%. In an interview conducted Thursdays with, uh, Thursday with CBS's 60 Minutes that aired Sunday evening, Powell sought to explain the central bank's rationale for eventual reductions to a broad, uh, broad public audience. 
And he said, the danger of moving too soon is that the job's not quite done and that uh, the really good readings we've had for the last six months somehow turn out not to be a true indicator of where inflation's heading. Uh, Powell said in the interview with CBS, Scott Pelley, according to a transcript provided by the network. So um, I've been saying this for months, if not years, if anyone's been following me for that long, um, you know, that really prices are driven by um, monetary policy, right? And monetary policy divergence. And what we're having is, is uh, the pricing out of rate cuts, which is usually bullish for a currency or appreciates a currency and the market had got really too far ahead of itself and so um on the charts that's pretty much what you're seeing but this week prices really didn't go anywhere for the for the dollar and i think the market is really waiting for this week um this week's cpi data to really kind of confirm whether um the dollar um and the federal reserve are likely to have a cut rates sooner or later now if they're likely to cut sooner then what you're likely to have is um, the dollar sell off, right? So if inflation uh, really starts to surprise to the downside and goes towards their um, 2% target, then the dollar is actually likely to start to sell off, right? And there's an opportunity there. If it is, you know, if it remains sticky or actually goes higher, then in fact, I think the dollar is likely to rally. So um, I'm still a dollar bull at the moment. Of course, that can change if, um, you know, the data support has to support the narrative. The data doesn't support, uh, you know, um, rate hikes later. I'm sorry, rate cuts later. Then, um, then there's an opportunity to look for some shorts on the dollar. <clears throat> now, looking at the um, the dollar yen, and again with some decent news uh, with with the dollar. Um, you know, prices basically pushed past this uh, supply zone right here. We did react from it uh, last week, but then. Um, there was some data uh, out. I think it was for was it for the yen? I can't remember if it was for the uh, for the yen last week. I oh, know last week's uh, data was consumer confidence, so um, it must have been for the dollar that kind of pushed it higher. Anyways, uh, the yen is going to be interesting because um, I think it's one of the trades for 2024 in terms of buying the yen. And it says here, Japanese firms boosting pay for young workers is good news for the Bank of Japan. And so big firms have already announced starting salary pay gains may translate to smaller firms over wages and push Bank of Japan. So uh, Japanese firms are increasingly boosting starting pay for young employees, potentially building longer term momentum for overall wage growth in a welcome development for the Bank of Japan as it seeks evidence of a virtuous wage price cycle. So wage prices um, can contribute to inflation. And if inflation uh, starts to rise due to wage uh, uh, price uh, hikes uh, from companies, then the Bank of Japan are likely to hike rates and they're the only G10 uh, central bank that are, you know, looking to hike rates while everyone is looking to cut rates. So there's a massive divergence there. And so for me, the yen um, is looking like a buy. But of course, the data needs to support the narrative. Um, of course, if you, there's no point in saying I want to be a buyer of the yen if the data doesn't show that you should be a buyer of the yen. It says here, the positive news on pay comes as annual wage negotiations have kicked into high gear. If wage gain momentum carries over into this year, the Bank of Japan is expected to end the world's last negative interest rate regime by April, according to a majority of economists surveyed in January by Bloomberg. So um, I think technically it's not necessarily a pair um, uh, that I'm watching and unless, actually I think this, this week might actually be a, might be a decent um, start to a bit of a rollover if the, um, the 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 U.S. inflation does start to actually uh, come in a bit lower. So I think there could be a decent uh, short as well as um, any kind of data this week. And we've got GDP, but more importantly, inflation data for the yen. If that starts to come out um, higher, then I think actually the dollar yen with you know the, the Federal Reserve looking to cut rates and the yen looking to uh, high rates, I think we could see a really nice uh, swing trade to the downside. But again, the, the trigger is really uh, the data supporting uh, the narrative. So that's where you are. If you do want to be a buyer of the, <clears throat> of the dollar yen, 
uh, then you're looking at this area here in terms of uh, demand. So pull back into this zone here or uh, pull back into the zone down here before looking at getting long. <clears throat> dollar CAD, dollar CAD this week, um, we were saying that last week, um, prices could come up here and start to reverse. Um, but we did have basically prices bounce off of this level of supply. And so not necessarily a pair that I'm interested in, in trading, but um, if you are, I do think that um, again, it's, it's a difficult one to kind of read. I think the, um, the the it's really about the dollar and, and whether inflation is coming higher or lower. So across the board, any kind of dollar crosses uh, this week are going to be driven by um, what what happens with the data. If you are looking at buying the dollar, though, I think a pullback into this zone, maybe maybe now, matter of fact, maybe a bit deeper into that zone should be nice if you are looking for a sell trade. I think the fresher area of supply uh, up at the 136s should be a decent area to look for a short trade. Pound, uh, dollar, the pound, dollar, again, not really a pair that I'm looking at trading for now, but that could change, obviously, depending on what happens this week. The pound does have uh, a lot of news coming out, so you've got uh, unemployment rate on um what's that tuesday then you've got uh gdp and then you've got retail sales as well so um lots of data coming out we have bounced we did end up bouncing off of this level that i thought um you know was was a decent level of uh, not only demand but it had the confluence of support and resistance it was the bottom of this auction as well uh, where prices made higher highs so a really nice technical level but in terms of uh fundamentals i think the uh uh, this pair isn't necessarily the best pair to look for a trade in terms of divergences. The uh, UK says job market was tighter than expected in late 2023. So unemployment rate lower and, and inactivity higher than estimated. So the uh, new data meant to improve flagship labour force survey. So what does that all mean? It says here unemployment uh, by the new measure was 3.9% in the three months through November, well below the 4.2 estimated using previous data. The Office of National Statistics said Monday, joblessness has now fallen in four straight months according to the improved data set when the temporary experimental figures had shown it to be flat over the same period. So the combination of factors suggests that labor market has not loosened as much as thought and may be putting more upward pressure on wages and prices that may help persuade the Bank of England to wait for uh, wait a few more months before starting to cut interest rates. So um, the fact that labour market hasn't um, or unemployment hasn't risen um, is and and you know the, it has an effect on on pressure on, on wages and prices prices being inflation. It um, obviously has the effect that the Bank of England. Um, if inflation isn't coming down, the Bank of England are likely to uh, hold for longer. So, in fact, that is uh, more of a, a positive, and not necessarily even positive, but just more appreciative of the uh, for the uh, for the pound. And so, that's the reason why you're seeing this this potential bounce at the moment. I am actually over a buyer of the pound, but just not against the uh, the dollar. But if you are looking to buy the pound, um, and again, it depends on what happens this week. Uh, any pullbacks will be nice and if you're looking to be a seller of the pound i think a pullback up into this uh the highs of the one two eights is going to be a decent area to look for or maybe even just above that could be nice for a potential sell um there uh, pounds yen we are at a very interesting level and uh, again i think there could be a decent turning point driven by data if data comes out and supports um, uh, maybe some pound selling, then then I think we could have prices start to pull back uh, around here. And this could be a really nice uh, short trade. There is a stop hunt opportunity as well above that for anyone who's looking for shorts on the uh, pound yen. So that's where we are with that. In terms of buying, you've got also another demand zone right there. And so any pullbacks into that zone, I think, is going to be nice technically for a potential buy. You also have uh, some support and resistance right there. So level level within that area of demand. Looking at the euro dollar, so the euro dollar, um, the euro, 
again, not necessarily an all-out buy. I'm out of the, uh, like I said, the Euro Swiss. Um, my bias is probably still looking a bit bearish, um, simply because um, although they avoided a recession, um, it does look like they could be one of the first central banks to look to cut rates. And so it says, it says here the ECB rate cut timing is only first tricky call in easing process. So size of steps, easing pace and end point are all up for debate and officials have shared widely different views on how to proceed. So it says here officials are currently hammering out whether the cut, whether to begin cuts in April or June. And so, um, you know, the fact that they're considering April and the market is looking like it's pricing in April uh, doesn't look good. And they would be one of the first central banks to cut rates. This is the reason why I actually exited the um, the Euro Swiss. And so um, it says here, a comparatively simple decision considering they must also weigh the size of their steps, how quickly they want to proceed and where borrowing costs will end up. So the eventual strategy hinges on the clauses, or sorry, the clauses, the pluses and minuses of acting sooner and slower versus later and more rapidly. The governing council 26 member must also find a way of signaling their intentions without raining on repeated pledges to be steered by data. So um, yeah, uh, the ECB had definitely have a, a bit of a headache at the moment. And so we could see potentially more downside um, you know, to this, uh, to the euro dollar. But I think at the moment, this week is really going to be driven mainly by uh, what happens with the US data this week. And so um, strong US data should push prices to the downside. Um, anything where the uh, where the Fed, where the market thinks that the Fed are likely to cut sooner, then actually, in fact, you probably will see prices move to the upside. Uh, on the euro dollar so again probably just more awaiting uh, the news for this week um, euro yen I am uh, bearish on this and prices have come up to actually a decent level um, and so I do want to look for some short trades hopefully um, slightly higher if prices can come up to this uh, this higher round here then I really want to be a buyer there or just above that area there and it's going to be a really nice stop hunt so let's see what happens let's pull that up a little bit should I put that yeah that's that's there as that um, is where supply is and we pressed it right there so yep yeah, that's nice got a lot of confluence nice clean level and so buying the yen for me um, is uh, again just just need the data to kind of support my buying and so let's see what happens on this. If you are looking to buy the euro, right, then really you're looking for a pullback down into uh, this demand zone, probably with a bit more confluence of the um, that support and resistance level within that level area of, of demand. Euro pound, euro pound. Um, the Bank of England are expected to... Um, cut later than than Europe so I do think any pullbacks up into that zone there should be actually quite nice for a sell um, but at the moment we've just seen prices really kind of auction uh, within here but if their you know data does change and uh, the euro does get its act together then I think actually this could be a decent pullback buy but uh, for now my bias is really looking for short trades um, and I'm looking for more more of a fresher area of supply so if prices pull back to the 85.50s 85.90s then I think that's going to be really nice for a sell trade um, Aussie dollar uh, Aussie dollar again um, I'm actually bullish on the Australian dollar um, but I think well, not against the uh, the US dollar, but uh, let's see what happens here this week. And again, this level is probably holding up based off of um, not only the, 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 the dollar news or the expectation, but also, also as well. I think NAB confidence doesn't necessarily have uh, a great uh, or any kind of major impact on price. So I think this week is really going to be, um, again, core inflation and the, the, the Australian dollar could actually be quite a good, decent buy against the uh, the dollar if, you know, the Fed are signalling that they may cut sooner or the market thinks that the uh, Fed will cut sooner. So at the moment, I think price 
of the Australian dollar is going to be driven mainly by uh, what happens with the Fed rather than the uh, the Australian Central Bank, the RBA. Uh, but if you do want to be a uh, a seller and buy the uh, the dollar, the US dollar, uh, then any pullbacks up into that supply zone there is going to really be where you want to look for uh, trade technically. And finally, gold. So gold, um, again, with dollar strength this week, you've seen basically a sell-off. I'm not going to say a sell-off, but that's um, basically just a bit of a pullback. Um, and so really gold is going to be driven by the interest rate uh, cutting cycle and again if price does come down here and you want to be a buyer of gold I think that's going to be a really nice level to look for any kind of buying but again you need really the confluence of uh, the dollar to be uh, to be weak um, in terms of interest rate cuts uh, if you are looking for short trades and a pullback up into this fresher area of supply is really where you're looking for sell trades. Overall, uh, gold, uh, as you know, central banks are in their cutting cycle, uh, gold should really be a buy over the medium to long term. So any pullbacks, I think, should be buying opportunities. It just depends on when you want to buy, right? It's just about the timing. So um, overall, uh, I am um, would be bullish on gold if it pulls back to even you know the ninety the nineteen seventies, nineteen eighties, nineteen seventies. That would be a really good technical buy I think but um, again uh, being slightly more bullish on the uh, dollar at the moment I don't think um, I want to be a buyer of gold just at these levels just yet but again it really does depend upon what happens this week uh, for uh, with inflation so that's it for this week hope you uh, enjoyed the content and found it useful um, I wish you a great trading week and I'll speak to you uh, soon until the next video